Okay, welcome to the video. So today I'm going to show you um, a file I made using Blender and Geometry Nodes and this file is um, about crowd simulation done in Geometry Node. So this is continuation of my uh, work with um, the ants, like the ants colony uh, simulation render thing I did like a year ago. Um, so with this, I was able to have, you know, hundreds or thousands of agents uh, kind of doing their thing, just sensing um, other agents, sensing obstacles, uh, and just uh, sensing foods, uh, finding their way home. Um, it used also a trail system, um, like a physerum simulation. Uh, this is different, so this crowd simulation, I mean, it's using also um, the same ideas, uh, but there is no trails and there is basically no real, um, um, how do you call it, pathfinding at the moment. Uh, I plan to implement that at some point. I already tried a few things. I, I tried using, um, um, how is it called, the edge path, uh, shortest edge path. Uh, maybe I need a better nav mesh to make it work. Uh, just a more uh, geometry, I don't know. Um, and I also tried to make my own, like A star, uh, pathfinding algorithm uh, and it was pretty complex I spent days on it didn't really get the result I wanted so anyway right now this is how the simulation work um, it's only like trying to reach a goal defined by um, here uh, location and location start um, how it is called an empty so this is the end, and if I try to move this, I don't know, here and change the start to over there. Um, let's also, uh, yeah, put 500 agents. Um, and you will see that they will eventually reach their goal and avoid each other and obstacles. Um, so like, these big cylinders are all under um, obstacle um, collection and they will try to avoid them. So yeah, here you go. And you can see it's, it's pretty stable. So some of you must be wondering at this point, some of you more well versed uh, with geometry node, um, how do I get character animation in geometry nodes? How, how do you, cause you can see uh, when they slow down, they actually the animation actually slow down. And the short answer to that is I don't. I don't use animation. What I use is um, similarly to how you would animate a 2D character. I use actually um, one mesh for each frame of the animation, and I switch between those mesh on each agent depending. Uh, on uh, what like part of the animation they're currently in, right? So I kind of keep track of that as well on each point. Um, so this means you can have multiple characters and with different walking animation with my setup. I haven't done that yet. Uh, it's just a proof of, con of concept. I have been working on it for a few few days. Uh, I know it's, it's possible, um, so I don't really need to do it to, be, to make sure it is. Um, this will go at a later date now. I'm, I'm still playing with making it look decent and like have decent results. Uh, my aim is to make it work for like crowd simulation, like scientific crowd simulation, but not as a, like visually, I want visually to, to, to have it look kind of like that, or like, uh, you know, like an army um, walking kind of disorganized army or like, I don't know, refugees, nomads, big groups, just walking in mostly barren uh, land. That's kind of what I, I'm going for. Uh, 
it's definitely not going to be uh, the best crowd simulation ever invented, but it's going to be a crowd simulation that works in Blender. So I think that's why it's interesting, because it's all made with nodes. Uh, so let's kind of go through the geometry node tree. Um, so while well, I'm, I'm going to like, it's not a tutorial, obviously, there is too many, too much things going on, but like roughly, um, let's see. So first time um, spawning uh, a bunch of points, uh, which is defined here by my number of agents. And this get recasted to the ground, so they spawn on the ground. Um, then I do some initialization and attributes. I also have a, a vertex um, in the base geometry. Uh, you can see I have one vertices here that I select, which is going to be here at the center of the screen. Uh, right there and that's only to control my camera so that's among my geometry node um, object that I have only one versus that I use just to uh, get a camera in there that kind of follows the, the crowd automatically it kind of aim at the middle of it I can still control it um, as well which is nice I'll show you that uh, I guess I did already show you but so and now while we are at the core of the uh, geometry node tree which is a simulation zone um, so here I just separate for my camera and then th that's where we go. So if I give you an overview first, uh, we find the direction attribute. So, um, this is like, so imagine each agent is a point. Okay. It needs a, a, a direction to, to what wall to the goal. So that's, uh, this vector here is my direction attribute. Um, then once it has uh, each agent has a direction, it tries to avoid others. So if there is um, another agent in front of the first agent, it's gonna like uh, rotate that direction vector um, to go left or right around it. Um, also, I have a slope speed multiplier. So when the slope uh, gets more important, they slow down and where it's flat, they get their, to their top speed. So going up or down makes them slow down and going flat makes them go uh, full speed. And then I avoid obstacles. So all of this is in series. Uh, now that I have avoided other and, and I also, when you avoid other, by the way, you also slow down. Um, so I control the rotation of the direction vector as well as their speed. So if there is like another agent very close to them, they they kind of stop uh, and wait for the agent in front to to get some distance between them. Um, but anyway, uh, then you avoid obstacles. I'll show you how I do that. It's very basic. It's just with a raycast. <coughs> then I actually, so all of this, I'm just, when I'm dealing here, and that's like a good tip when you're doing a simulation of, of that sort, when just work with attributes and at the end, only at the end, do you actually um, move your points. Like don't get moving your points multiple times. Uh, you just do that at the end using the attributes that you've created. So you can have a speed attribute uh, and a direction attribute, or some people prefer to just have all of that in one velocity attribute uh, vector. Uh, that's fine too. Um, I tend to split them uh, for different reasons, just because it's easier to deal with sometimes. Um, so yeah, now I move them. You can see each agent has a random speed as just to, you know, not everyone walks the same speed. So it's nice to have that variation and it kind of creates avoidance and uh, stuff like that, like makes, makes the group look more organic. And uh, here, diving in the, the move, um, you can see I take my direction attribute here and I multiply, uh, I scale that using uh, my movement speed here and here. And also uh, you can see I have attributes that I could spill multi speed multiplier. Um, I have one for avoiding other agents and, uh, and well, I guess I have two, why? Um, yeah, no reason. I think that's, that can go actually, that can really go. And do I need multiply? I do. I don't think that makes any difference. 
uh, just some old notes that I've had that I left here, I guess. That's fine. Um, and then once I moved and I steered and I rotated my agents to be going where they should be going, uh, then I uh, pick um, a frame of the animation that I showed you earlier. Um, and based on the speed of um, the agent, I'm going to switch uh, the animation frame to be you know, further away or, or to stay the same. Um, and yeah, and then once I've simulated on my point, only then can I use this animation frame attribute I created here to pick the right animation to actually instance on my points on each point the right animation frame right so that's why also i get good performance is because i'm doing this instancing at the end and as you can see i can easily have thousands of uh, people in the crowd and i still get 45 frames per second uh, which is nice and all of them are avoiding each other and obstacles and every frame there is a calculation for uh, both of these things on each agent and you can see they're gonna split and uh, try to reach my goal which is I don't know I don't remember where it is I guess over there and some of them are going through the obstacle I mean it's not working uh, amazingly well but it's getting there it's getting there. You can see some of them are actually like kind of inside. That's fine. I'm okay with that for now. Um, you know, a few hours ago it wasn't working nearly as well. So, yeah. I guess like from far away it's already looking pretty good. Uh, especially if you don't have any obstacles. Let's uh, let's try that. So if I go here and I mute um, the obstacle avoidance. Let's see what kind of result we get. Unless maybe we have a little bit less, um, like a hundred refugee kind of guys, nomads, just going through the land, right? So, and I'm gonna show you the camera too. Um, I don't know why I have keyframes. All right, let's see what they do. So you can see I push um, the, um, avoidance of other agents pretty high to be able to deal with uh, obstacle because they would like kind of bunch up together near obstacles and right now for this situation i would um, actually change that to be a bit less and i can do that um well i could limit because right now they slow down. So yeah, I'm sampling. So here I'm just sampling the agent in front of them. So I take the direction of the agent. I add like here a point 25, um, well, basically 25 centimeters in front of the agent. I sample uh, the position of the nearest agent. So if this vector is 25, that's my initial agent. That's a vector, directional vector. Then it's gonna try to see which agent is closest to this position. And then I'm gonna do some calculation to see what's the distance between this like agent. If let's say this one is the closest to this point, I'm gonna try to see uh, how far both of those agents are. And I'm gonna reduce the speed of um, the agent if it's too close to the one in front of it. And I'm going also, whoops, I'm going also to avoid it and kind of rotate my direction to avoid him. And I do that using the cross product of um, like the subtraction of the position of the sampled uh, agent and the currently processed agent. And I do uh, so the cross product of that uh, with the direction vector. And this gives me a positive or negative uh, angle when I separate uh, the Z component of that cross product, which I can use uh, to rotate my direction vector. So it kind of avoids uh, the agent in front 
of it. And you can see here I'm limiting the angle. It can rotate every frame. And I'm also making it so uh, when the agent is front is very distant, um, it's kind of like dividing that angle so the agent isn't turning as much. And I guess if I decrease this, it's going to limit uh, their turning. Or it's the other way around. Cause it's, oh yeah, it's, gonna, it's the other way around because it's dividing. Right. So they should not avoid the, uh, themselves as much. And you can see that now they stay uh, grouped a little bit more. Eventually, they will spread out uh, slightly. And you can see the camera here. I can still rotate, but it's kind of following the middle point of the group. I, I can also pan, so I'm really free, but at the same time, it, it kind of follows. And here you can see uh, some of them are faster than others. Um, and that's due to the agent random speed. And uh, let's say if they had all the same speed, uh, you would see less of that, even though the one at the back are going to uh, slightly slow down for the one at the front at the start, especially because they are so bunched up. And you can see at the start, like for example, this one, uh, I'm pretty sure I are not going to go full speed at the start. Oh, see. And eventually they're going to reach their normal speed. And you can see the animation as well, uh, slowing down at the start. And you can see we are even don't really have enough frames in the walking animation to have a smooth transition. And by the way, the walking animation is only 25 frames for a full cycle of walk. Uh, that's not a lot of frames. So if you had a 60 frame animation, which you can easily get on Mixamo, um, by the way, and you can actually choose that as an option, the number of uh, frames you want, I think, um, then you would get a much smoother animation. You could even consider having a walk and a run animation and switch between them uh, depending on speed as well. Um, yeah, a lot of stuff we can do with that. So yeah, that's just a proof of concept video showing you uh, that doing crowd animation is doable even if we don't have any kind of uh, rigging interaction within geometry nodes or animation interaction really. Uh, you can still do it using very old ideas of um, frame by frame animation, 2D animation, and just like cut your uh, 3D animation uh, in, uh, in a multiple mesh. And each one of them is one frame of the, of the animation. And with that, you can do a lot of geometry node uh, stuff uh, with characters. And you know, that's just crowd animation, but I'm sure there is many other application. And I thought I would share because I never seen anyone do that really. And I'm sure there is some other people, but I've never seen them. So yeah, enjoy. I'm sure uh, you can make some cool things with this. Bye.